Hello Team Curious and welcome to this new video on building a responsive navigation. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to build this mobile first and we're going to build it in Visual Studio Code as you can see here. If you haven't already go and watch the video that I released recently on setting up your basic starter front-end setup for Visual Studio Code because in that I've included two extensions which we'll be using today which is Live Server which is what you see on the right here, which is the display of the website. And the other is live SAS compiler, which will need to compile our styling or our SAS. Now we will be using another extension today uh, called emoji snippets, and that'll be allow us to put emojis in. Why you might ask, you will find out soon enough. Now to build this navigation, we need some structure. We need some HTML because right now we've just got a blank page. So let's go do that right now. So if we go here, we are going to add some semantic HTML. Now when I say semantic HTML, I mean HTML that describes itself to the browser and screen readers for people who might be sight impaired or might have to use a keyboard to access the website because they're not able to actually see the website. So we need to be as explicit as possible and tell them this is what it is. So we want this element to come across that it is a header. Luckily, there is a header element. So if you do that, that's gonna wrap our entire work. So we open that. Now we want a logo to go here as well. So we're gonna create a div of logo. Now I'm gonna be using Emmet for a lot of this. So if you see me writing things in a weird way in Visual Studio Code, it's just me uh, using Emmet. So I'm gonna add a class of logo. And if I press tab, it's automatically gonna create everything for me and put me in the center so I can start adding content again. I'm going to go onto a new line, going to add a paragraph and within it, I'm just going to put logo. Now what we also want to do is add a navigation. Now there is a nav element to tell browsers and screen readers that this is a navigation and we're going to add a class of navigation. So if we do that, open that up. And then what we want to do is we want to create a menu list. So let's create a an unordered list and we'll call it nav list and if we open that we will create a few items so we'll create uh, should we say three and we'll add a class of nav link so that's you can see the power of Emmet like and how quickly you can get up and running it's something that I definitely recommend you go learn luckily I've created a video for you to go check out so once you're done with this video uh, go check out that Emmet video and get all uh, clued up on Emmet. So let's add some menus. So we'll add about, uh, we will add services, and then we will add contact, your generic menu items. Okay, as we can see, there's no styling for this site now. So what we can do, there's a bit of drab, it's a bit boring, but we've got all the core stuff there. Now to bring this alive, we're going to need a theme. We're going to need some kind of style, something we're going for. And you know what? Let's just go for a banana theme because why not? So the first thing we're going to need in our banana themed navigation is a banana. So let's go add that now. So I am going to use. So let's go add that now and we will use an emoji as the icon. So if we go here, we can see now that we've got a banana emoji as the logo. Now, the way we got that is using the emoji snippets. So definitely grab that if you want to add snippets to your project. Uh, and all you need to do is basically do the double dots and then you can get whatever you want. So now that we've got the logo, we kind of want to change the name as well because it doesn't really make sense. So let's call it Banana Co. So we've got all the rest sorted. Um, we don't really need to touch anything else now in terms of the HTML. Pretty much happy with that. So let's jump into the CSS. So I've got all the CSS already set up for us. So we've got the HTML on the body, the header, the logo, the navigation. These are all classes from the HTML that I've brought over and uh, already put in place for us. So let's go here. I wanna give the background color of the website a yellow because why not and we want to add a background color of the header 
to be black. Now we also want to remove the margin and padding on the HTML and body. I can notice that there is a bit of is a bit of padding there. Where's that coming from? So we basically had a pesky paragraph tag that was causing that issue. So we want the rest of the color to be yellow. We want everything else to be Oh, hell no, we're not doing that. Everything else to be white. So this is our basic style setup for the project before we get stuck in. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a mobile first approach to build this site. You can use any approach you want, but from my experience, building from the mobile upwards is what prevents a lot of issues you end up getting later on. So let's start styling this up now. So let's go to the logo and let's increase the font size. So we'll increase that to 30 pixels and see how that looks. That's okay, it's not too bad. Uh, let's try 40 pixels. Yeah, that's better. That's uh, that's about the right size. And then let's change the nav as well. So let's increase the font size on that. We'll say that's 16 pixels. So looking at that, you can see that it looks a bit ugly. We kind of want to improve the font. So let's go to Google Fonts and let's grab Open Sans. And we will get... We'll get 800 for the logo and we'll grab all of this for everything else. Now, because this is obviously just a personal project, you wouldn't be adding all of these different like stars. You'd be very specific as to what your needs are. But because we're just doing a personal project, we can just add all of these. So if we go to embed and we will import it into the style sheet above. So we've added all those font weights and the font and then we can just go copy and paste that. So what we'll do is we'll just add it to the rest of the site. So we'll just pop that in there. And if you go back to the site, you can see everything has changed. Now, ah, so I just realized that is actually the wrong class name. So let's change that. And then we can get rid of these. So that is sorted. Right, so now we've got a basic structure of what we want. I would probably say uh, we want like an extended view of this. So maybe we go here and we go display flex, puts it all on one line. And then we go justify content space around. So we just say we want some space around this and then we can have the menu like this. Now, we also want this logo in the center. So we want this in about this area here. So we'll go to logo and we'll go text align center. And that is now in the center. Now for a mobile view, I would say that's fine. I would say without having a hamburger menu to click and have all these drop down, I think this is the the best compact way to do this for now. Also add some padding because it's quite a bit, it's quite thin. There's like probably a few pixels between the yellow and the text. So let's change that now. So let's go to, oh, let's go to header actually. And what we'll do is we'll add some padding. So we'll add about, shall we say 20 pixels? Yeah, 20 pixels is fine. That's good. Now, I feel like these two are very close together. So if we have a look here, I think it just needs a bit more margin on the top. So if you add a bit more margin on the nav list, that should do the trick. So add margin top, we'll say, Ooh, not we'll do 40. There we go. I think that's a lot better now. There's a bit of a separation there. There's a clear divide between different elements and it kind of looks a bit better. It is quite chunky for a header on mobile, which is not ideal. Right, so I think that's fairly responsive. So let's start going up a size. So let's go to tablet now. So I would probably say about 780, 760. Between that is tablet size. So we're on tablet now. Um, I'd probably retain this size a bit more. And then when we get to about 900, maybe 980, I would say that is laptop size. That's starting to become laptop size or 1020 actually. So we'll say at 1020, we'll start changing it up. So if we say, this is set to display flex right now. So if you see the logo and the navigation, they're both wrapped within header. So what we want these to do is actually be on the same line when we get to this size. So if we go here and we'll add a media query and we'll just say, we'll say min width, 980 pixels. And what we'll say is we'll, we'll want display flex. So as you can see, when we get to about 980, it makes the switch. So let's go to about 980 and let's sort this out. So we really want this menu on this side here. And um, this is actually in the right place, so that's absolutely fine. So what we'll do is we'll add some more styles here. So we'll say align item center because we want it to be vertically centered or vertically roughly about in the right line. Now we can see there's a bit of a difference 
and the reason is I think this emoji is putting the text off a bit so and there's this margin as well so we're gonna have to remove this margin on the nav list so if we take this and we go to the nav list and we'll add the same media query but this time what we'll say is we don't want any margin let's see what happens and you can see that's already become a lot more centered but now it's a little off because it's not quite where we want it so what we can say is though we've set margin to zero we can set we can set the rest of it to zero so this will be top right bottom and uh, left so it'll be north east south west so if we say here oh we want about 10 pixels should we say it's going to move it 10 pixels down and i think that's starting to get in the right place Let's just say 15 for now and see where the cards fall. I reckon that's closer to being a bit more aligned. So now we could move this across to this side, but because we're using flex, we have a very easy way to separate these two, to have the logo on the left and we have the menu on the right. If we go to the header, which contains them both, we also want to separate them out. So we'll say space between, and then that adds the space between the two elements that we have. We have the logo and we have the nav. So we want to create some space between these now as well. So if we go to nav link, we'll just add a bit of margin right. And we'll say maybe 20 pixels actually. And then there you go, we've got a bit more spacing. Now, I think that this could actually be a bit bigger on laptop and desktop. So if we go here and we'll add a larger font size and we'll say font size of 30 pixels. It might be a bit too large. Let's scale it down. Let's go to 25 pixels. There you go. That's about right. Um, and then I think that's okay. So right now we've got the general. So let's go take a look now. Let's see what that looks like on larger resolutions. Now you can see an immediate problem. On a larger resolution, you've got the logo all the way on the left there. And you've got the menu all the way on the right on the very largest resolutions. We don't really want that. Now with most websites, you kind of have a max page length and beyond that, it just it just carries on, but the content remains in the middle. So you're not searching on either side of the screen for the content. And the way we do that is we add a maximum width on the header. So if you go to the header up here and we'll add a max width, and what we'll say the max width will be let's say 1200 pixels. So now it being 1200 pixels, so let's add a max width. So I had a max width of 1200 pixels. Now immediately you can see a problem. Though we've got the desired outcome, we've got it limited to 1200 pixels. It is now too small. So the way we fix that is we basically A, put this in the center. So now that we have this in the center, but we also want that this black background to carry on from side to side. And I'll show you how we'll do that. So if you go back to the index.html and we'll just minimize all of this, what we'll do is we'll just take all of this, cut it out, and we're going to add a inner element. So let's add a div and we'll say header inner. And this will be the inner element of the header. Now, as you can see, it's moved a few things across but that's absolutely fine because what that means is we can just take everything that's in the header and just switch that to header inner. We will take this property, move this up here, and we'll say it will have a width of 100%. And then if we go back here and we stretch it, you can see that we've got this perfectly in the center and we've still got the black background and it's working beautifully now. One of the problems is when we hover over these, we don't get any kind of indication that this is clickable. And right now it actually isn't. So if we go back to the HTML, we want to add some links around this. So if you get the about services and contact, we use multiple cursors. We'll just cut that out. We'll add, uh, we'll add some anchor tags and within, we'll just copy and paste that in. I'm going to use multiple cursors again. And I'm just going to add uh, just a simple uh, link and I'll just copy and paste again and I'll just add it as uh, links to this. So when we go here, this is all changed styling now. So if we click about, it will go to about. If it goes to services, it goes to con blah, 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 blah. And it just takes us to each individual page. And that's all well and good. 
and we get the uh, styling now. But what we should be doing is we should be moving these class names over now to the links because they're not really relevant to this. And in fact, if we copy that, and we add multiple cursors and we'll go class name. And if we go class and we pop that in there and then we go here and we change this to item. In fact, we should probably catalyze that and then we'll change these. And there we go. So that's a little bit of a refactor. And then we'll go back to styles and we'll change and that all should remain the same. But now we have nav item as well, which we'll add here for later use. So if you go back to nav link, what we want to do is we want to add a color of white just to override those styles. And we've got an underlink here to indicate that this is a link, but we want to do a bit more than that. What we're going to do is we're going to add some hover states so if we go here and we'll add a hover state where essentially we change the color a little bit. So we're going to go and change this color to, let's say, orange when we hover over. So if we do that, you can now see a nice orange color. But we want to do a bit more than that. We want to add a bit of a nicer animation just to make it look a bit fancier. So the way we do that is with pseudo selectors, because what we want to do is we want to add an element which is basically a block that goes as a line across the bottom here. So if we go back up to here and we go pseudo selector after and we want to basically just say it's an empty, it's just an empty bit of content. Uh, we want it to be position absolute. Uh, we want it to be display block. And we want it, we want the underline to have a height of let's say two pixels and we'll give it a background of orange. I'm going to say it's left 50% and we'll come in from the left and animate from there. It's going to have a width of zero initially, but we're going to animate the rest of the width. So we'll also want it out of sight to start with. So we'll say four pixels and then we'll add a transition. So the transition will be based off the width. So you actually can target what you want to transition. And we'll say we want it to go to the left and then it eases out. So you get this nice smooth animation where it's really quick and then it slows down a bit. And if we go back up here, we just want to add, we want to change this to hover after. So what we're saying is afterwards, this is what we want it to go back to. So we'll say this is width 100%. And we want the left to return to zero. So let's go take a look. Um, before we do this, let's just move that underline for now. So if we go to nav link and we'll go to text decoration and we'll just go to none so that it just removes the underline. Right, let's go take a look. So as you can see, it is trying to add it, but it's not quite. And that's because we haven't actually added a uh, position relative. So once we add position relative, boom. Now the reason why we had that problem was is the way position absolute works is that if you do use position absolute, it will go anywhere on the page, but you can contain it with position relative on its parent container. So nav link, if we look here, was the parent container for the after pseudonym element. And because it was set to absolute, it was just wandering around, just bouncing around everywhere in no real set place. Um, but with this set to position relative, it basically contains it within this small little space. And then you get this cool animation, right? Let's go check this out and see how this looks on mobile now. So if we start to go back down to tablet, still works great. And if we go back down to mobile, boom, Bananaco has a very cool navigation system set up now. It's as simple as that. And that is a responsive header with a navigation and a few little other cool things. Now, if you find that useful, please do like and subscribe and make sure to hit the bell notification for future tutorials and videos like this. I've been Harry and this has been Curious Bytes.